Hey guys, Buckeye Bar guys. Uh, we wanted to thank you guys for uh, tuning in to us here on uh, Buckeye Bar Talk. Uh, great show we got coming up today. Uh, we're really looking forward to you guys uh, listening and watching it. Um, but just wanted to remind everybody, just uh, remember to subscribe to the channel. Hit the all notifications bell. Uh, into, so that way, anytime uh, a new show comes up, you guys will uh, be alerted to it. And don't forget to like the video and uh, comment on the video. All interactions with us uh, helps us continue to grow. And uh, we appreciate your support. Now to the show. Welcome back, everybody, to Buckeye Bar Guys here on Buckeye Bar Talk. I'm Mike. And I'm John. Tonight's date is Thursday, September 1st, 2022, and we are literally two days from kickoff, uh, pretty much right about, um, and so pretty excited. Uh, Notre Dame on Saturday, so uh, I can't really think of a better way to start the season. Like It is wild to think about that the, this is the opener. The helmet game of helmet games. Um, I saw somebody put up on, I, it was a media guy. I can't think of who it was that did put up today that they wish that they both could wear both their homes and uh, for this year and next year. And I'm like, why not? Let's yeah. go. <laughs> I'd be down with that. I mean, that makes sense to me. I mean, you, UCLA and USC do, and no one seems to ever have an issue with that. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if uh, as long as the uniforms are uh, different and these ones are different that uh there's not going to be any confusion yeah, like that they should be able to uh handle that um so yep excited uh you know outside of week zero tonight's actually the start of week one you know we got one game and a soon to be a second game here in front of us so uh we are it's pretty excited to uh, get a uh, college football up and running here the uh, old school backyard brawls going on right now we got purdue penn state starting in about 30 minutes so yeah it's a good yeah. time yeah all right so what we're going over tonight so we're going to talk about a little just a little bit about the couple of the days and coach Knowles press conferences this week um just a couple tidbits i wanted to throw out there uh just kind of weird it just everybody's kind of like really oozing a lot of confidence and there's not a lot of like, I mean, there's coach speak, but there's not like, you know, well, you know, we got to, you know, show up in different things and blah, blah, blah. And we'll see how we, it's like, it's a lot like, yeah, we're pretty, we're just excited to get it kicked off and see if it look, how it looks. So I, I just think that it's uh it's kind of uh it's just interesting how confident they are. So I'm looking forward to talking about that. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit of just some of our things we want to see through the game. Um, you have a few uh, kind of uh, just breakdowns and different things about like just past things with Knowles and I think coach Fry mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we will finish up on um, just going over our uh, just predictions for all the big 10 games and maybe a couple of the top 25 games for uh, uh, this weekend. So uh, let's get going. All right, man. I can't wait. I, I just love this. Like it, it feels like the off season takes forever. And then when, once you hit this week, you're like a little kid on Christmas Eve, yeah. you know, you just can't wait. It's like, it's just this, like the days drag and you just cannot wait for Saturday. And it, you know, I love that it's a primetime game. I mean, it would have been criminal if this game was not primetime, but you just got to wait all day for it. Then, yeah. Luckily there's other football to <sighs> get to that point. Yeah, I know. Um, all right. So, uh, just a couple of things just off of uh day's presser from, uh, the couple of days ago, uh, he talked about, I mean, he talked, uh, when he said that they, the defense, uh, cause you know, he was asked a couple of questions of defense. Obviously the defense is kind of like the, you know, it's obviously the biggest thing going into the season. Just how does the defense biggest look? question mark? For um, sure. Yeah. And he's just, when he's talking about, you know, how they're playing fast and how they're playing violent. And, you know, there's all the, all these hints throughout the off season with all these press conferences about how they're really, really challenging the, the offense. And, you know, and it just seems like, you know, that that's kind of like bringing all this confidence on is that they must be playing the, Offense very tough in a lot of spots, which is a good thing in my opinion, because I think we all pretty much know. I, I mean, I know they got to show themselves, I think, but we all know what the offense is going to be. And the fact that they're playing ones on ones and the defense is showing up, you know, gives me a lot of confidence that, you know, they are really ready to play. Yeah. And having a challenge is good for Ryan Day also. I don't want to like. <laughs> I don't want to crap on anyone's parade here or anything. I mean, you always hear like 
Ohio State win or lose, you know, it's going to be a shootout. They're going to get theirs. They're going to score like Ohio State. No one's like we've heard for years. No one's keeping them under 40 points with Ryan Day as the head coach. Clemson 19, we scored 23. Alabama 20, we scored 24. Oregon last year, we scored 28. Michigan, we scored 27. No. So his four losses, he's failed to get above 30 points. So no. has not been this electric show that, you know, sometimes is what is always perceived about him that, you know, his offenses are going to score no matter what. Like, it's good that he's having a challenge as a defensive coordinator because I've, it's got to be difficult for him because I think he does have the, you know, he definitely we got the talent that we could score 40 yeah. points on anybody. But you got to like, you got to get in those situations where, you know what you need to do to be able to pull that out. And I don't know. Execution has been some of it on offense over the years. Some of it's been play calling. I think, I mean, Clemson, you could have scored 40 points on them in 19. I'm, I feel confident, at least 35. I feel yeah. confident about that. And then really like JK got hurt and they tightened up a lot. And it's like, so Ryan day, I mean, it's his fourth year as a full-time head coach. Yeah. He's learning this stuff, but yeah. You know, it, it's good for him, too, because he needs to be challenged as well. As they always yeah. say, iron sharpens iron, and it's absolutely 100% true. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, yeah, so it just seems like, you know, he, I mean, he had some good things to say about, you know, especially the defensive line. You know, he's liking where the depth is, you know, in his secondary right now uh, in that. And then it just, you know, he's just coming off as very confident that, you know, he's like, you know, I'm looking really forward to seeing what they now seeing it in person, mm -hmm. like they're seeing it out there when it matters, because, you know, it just seems like he, that he knows uh, that it's just, it's looking a lot different this year. And uh, then going off of Knowles, like, so, you know, Jim Knowles, so he's, he's had good press conferences. Like I felt like he's a good press conference. It's a different type of press conference compared to the, um, compared to, uh, previous coaches and current coaches on the staff but i think he's pretty good but he's never really been like overly like kind of like <laughs> playful with the media and he yeah. was this week you know he was joking around a little bit uh you know he, he was really he really embraced it this week yeah. like he's kind of like i don't want to say nervous i don't think it's been nervous up to this point but it's kind of like he's been reserved i don't know if he he trusts the media quite yet or doesn't know what he's getting himself into and then they're just like yeah. Nope. <laughs> throw it. Throw all that away. Yeah. Like it's they asked him to be Jim. They asked him if he's going to be like, uh, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, trying to take in everything yet. He's like, nope. He's <laughs> like, yeah, it's all about being locked in. And he's like, it's bad for my players. If I'm taking stuff in. he's like, I'll, I'll, I'll think back on it when I'm old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that Absolutely. was kind of fun, funny. And, uh, he said that, uh, I mean, he, he's joking. Uh, to me that again just i mean he said that he feels they're 100 percent ready and i just the way him being playful and a little like uh snapbacking at a couple of the uh, not like in a mean way just you know like just kind of joking with him about some of the questions they're asking that uh it just seems like that he, he's very confident yeah. and you know kind of in a different way it kind of made me think a lot about you know the last good defense we had and that was under halfley and halfley always was pretty confident in his press conferences that you know he was that you know he knew what they needed to be and uh that they were ready to be that and that uh and, you know, Kerry always gave good press conferences, but I think just the difference between like Kerry and what these guys, what Halfley and Knowles was like, is just, I mean, I guess in, in a lack of a better way of putting it, it's just that they're coming off as like Knowles is coming off as like a kind of like a general, like yeah. he knows where he knows what his defense is. He's been around him now for eight months and. Like he's coming off confident. He's feeling, you can tell he's feeling good about in the positions that they're in. And, uh, you know, he's talking about, I mean, he's like talking about how good his corners are and that it's about, you know, just the safety's about, you know, keeping the, uh, just that extra second to help the corners out, but you know, that they can all be on islands and, you know, that, you know, he didn't know any of these kids from last year. And, you know, he's talking good things about ransom and, you know, saying how he, he thinks that uh, Denzel's hips are better and his footwork and like, it's just coming off like just really strong. And he, I mean, when he's talking about steel and just how, you know, steel comes back at him on stuff and he's right, like, that's yeah. good. He's like, you know, you want to have a little, you know, 
back and forth between them. And, uh, you know, that shows that he cares about what he's doing and, you know, he's curious about stuff. And, uh, I think one of probably the, the favorite thing I think he said during the whole press conference is he's like, you know, pretty much Monday through Friday or Sunday through uh, Friday, he's like, you know, they're out of position and stuff like that. He's like, you know, that's on them. They have to be paying attention, and, mm -hmm. you know, learning and stuff like that. But on Saturdays, if they're not in the right position, that's my fault. And, uh, you know, I'm the one that was supposed to put them in those positions. And so I, I just think that, uh, you know, he said the process is the same, but the expectations are different. And I think he's relishing that. That I, I think I think he you definitely tell he's a cerebral guy. He likes challenges. He likes, you know, coming up with different types of defenses to uh, try to, uh, uh, you know, confuse offenses. And I think he's it, it definitely is coming off that he's enjoying the expectations part because it's now like he's like in the big leagues now. He's like, you know, does my style work? And, you know, right. that. You know, to go play for a national title, you know, this defense has to be a lot better than it was. And it's, you know, it's on me to do that. Yeah, no, I mean, definitely. He, like you say, like halfway, he just he comes off as like total like professional that knows what he's doing. So I like that. And that's not to say that Kerry Combs ever came off like he didn't know what he was doing, but it is just a different energy yeah. in the press conference. Um but yeah, I mean, I, I totally just agree with you. I mean, the guy's just totally locked in and he feels good. And like he's done it for a long time. So, you know, why wouldn't he feel good? Or maybe he's like the anti, you know, Urban Meyer that the sky was always falling, even when the team was great that, you know, Urban always had it that that other side of it, whereas you know, I'm going to constantly 100% of the time, I'm going to be challenging guys that, you know, you suck, you're not good enough. And I, I know he didn't say you suck during the press conferences, but he probably said it in the locker room. But I think clown show was, yeah, uh, was a code for suck. That was, yeah, that was about the receivers, right? Yeah, but he used the, word, oh, he used, he used the phrase clown show more yeah, he, than just, he used that for the, uh, what it was it the 2017 Illinois game? That's why JT had to come back in. Yeah, I mean that that was pretty bad. Um, but no, you know that was always like kind of his shtick that he was going to uh, you know always make them challenge themselves by saying they were never good enough. Where maybe Knowles sees the other side of that as the like completely hype his guys up 100. Wow. percent Like there's nothing wrong with us while continuously training them. It's not like he's like oh, hey, you know, we're great. And then he just leaves, lets it be like yeah. constantly working behind the scenes to get them better, but keeping them confident that yeah. they are good enough to do this. So I don't know. Maybe they're great. Maybe, you know, maybe it's a little this. Maybe it's a little yeah. that. It was just I was just quite impressed with it. I, I mean, and I. I mean, I'm not going to say I know anything about Oklahoma State's media. I doubt they have a beat room the size of Ohio State. Uh, yeah, there's no way. And like that. uh and it just seems like he was handling himself very well. Like when he talks about like when, so they're talking about, you know, Meyer or uh, mayor, the, you know, I mean, he could have, there's a way he could have approached that would have been mm -hmm. like, Oh, he's, he's fantastic. He's great. He's this and that he's like, we got to know where he's at right. at all times. And, you know, he's an NFL guy and he's going to get his, I mean, you, a lot of coaches say that, you know, Oh, he's going to get his catches and stuff like sure. that. But he, you know what he said? He's like, Hey man, he's going to the NFL and you know, we're going to throw a couple different types of coverage packages at him and uh, we'll always know where he's at and uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what he can do. And so it's like, mm -hmm. it's just like, I mean, I, I, you know, down right in his head, he knows hey, this guy's going to probably get 10 catches in this game, but he's like, you know, it's how do we limit him after that? Uh, you know, that, that, that's what everyone, you know, that's, that's gotta be everyone's mindset going into this. Like, we're not going to erase Michael Mayer. It's not going to happen. Like he's going to get plays, but you can limit them yeah. and you can make, you know, do your best to make nothing else work. Yeah, exactly. Cause you and I have always, always been of the mindset that if your team's good enough, no way in hell one tight end is going to be able to beat you. No, I mean, and I know it's a long time ago. Football has changed, but you know, the team that they're celebrating the, the 20th year national championship for on Saturday. I mean, that's kind of like what it was, you know, mm -hmm. Kellen had his way with them that night on that national championship, but they shut everybody else down. And that's, 
why they were able to win a national title because, you know, Andre Johnson and Willis McGahee didn't freaking rip them apart. Uh, you know, well, Roscoe Paris. I mean, they, what they, they all had good plays, but yeah. they weren't, it just, wasn't multiple they weren't, good plays. they weren't consistent. They weren't, they weren't the ones that were overwhelming you. They weren't killing you. Cause that's when, you know, when one of those guys starts getting in, that's when that opens up. And that's when Kellen Winslow then can sneak behind. And, you know, when you start focusing all on them, yeah. and, you, you know, then he can start doing damage because he was going to get his. But they they locked everyone else down. Yeah. So de- definitely, uh, you know, obviously we need to see it. Um, but I'm I'm feeling good going into this game. Just, I, just oh, the way he, he sounded in that press conference is just like, all right, I feel pretty good. And I was good. I mean, I feel good. I, you know, the butterflies start hitting at a point and like, you know, I mean, this is a good team too. I mean, I know they got injuries. They got guys with some, but they recruit well and there's guys oh, yeah. there and this is not a, this is still Notre Dame. Like this is a, this is a real football team that they're going to be playing against. And you know, if some things go wrong for Ohio state, Notre Dame could very easily stay in this game. Uh, you know, <laughs> and this is not to crap on Nebraska or Texas for now. Cause I think Texas is on the upswing, but you know, Notre Dame is still kind of like Notre Dame. They're not, it's not just like helmet recognition only. They still field a really good football team. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, you want to hit your uh, couple of these breakdowns and then we will get into kind of the stuff we want to see for the game. Yeah. I'm kind of all over the place here. So <laughs> excuse me for that. Um, first, I, I was just kind of looking at last season because we don't got a ton of this year of what we're going off of. So you kind of got to look back last year, try to piece, you know, put pieces together with that. Um, so first, just, you know, as far as the teams go, and I just realized I didn't kind of like finish all my research. So I apologize on that. Um, offenses, though, this is how they stack up. Ohio State average 561.7 yards per game last year, 181 on the ground, 381 in the air. Uh, Notre Dame average 427, um, 144 on the ground, 282 in the air. So quite the difference um, through the air, you know, on the ground, Ohio State still was about 40 yards more per game, but definitely the huge difference is the 100 yards in the air. As far as defense, a um, lot closer than what you would think for a team that's banking on, you know, our defense just being in shambles and they're going to run all over us. So Ohio State gave up 374 yards per game. Notre Dame gave up 360. Uh, Ohio State gave up 127 on the ground, 246 in the air. Notre Dame gave up 136 on the ground, 224 in the air. So not much of a difference. Um, It looks like they were actually, they both are, they both have 5.3 yards per play. It looks like is what they gave up. So neither, neither of those are great. so, yeah, I mean, it's not like their defense wasn't just like, you know, the the 85 Bears or anything yeah. that, you know, they, they had their own problems on defense as well. Um, returning production. So we know a lot of Ohio State. I did write them down. Um, Notre Dame is actually losing their So they lost their starting QB, number one wide receiver and number one running back all got drafted. Actually, I don't think Cone got drafted, but he, he's no longer there. Um, so they're replacing that with Tyler Buckner is a former five star. So the kid's got some real talent. He's yeah. a dual threat. Uh, last season, he was 21 of 35, three touchdowns, three interceptions. Um, crazy stats, though, for you think of like the time he played. He had about three or he had 300 yards passing too. he had over 300 yards rushing. 7.3 yards per carry, three touchdowns on the ground. So the guy definitely provides a dual threat. Yeah. And I know he has some arm talent. You hear conflicting things coming out of their camp that, you know, he's accurate. Some people say that, you know, he's not accurate, that the beat writers are just blowing smoke. So I don't know what we're going to see there. Yeah. Um, returning receiving production. So Braden Lindsay, uh, 350 yards, uh, 10.9 yards per catch. Yeah, and then three touchdowns. Lorenzo Styles had 344 yards, 14.3 yards per catch, and a touchdown. And, of course, the um, aforementioned uh, Michael Mayer had 71 catches, 840 yards, 11.8 per pass, 
and oh shoot, 11 touchdowns maybe i don't seven touchdowns it looks like is what i wrote down so not i mean they don't have a lot of receiving production coming back but they do have their top receiver from receiving threat being the tight end coming back rushers uh kyron williams was last year so he's gone chris tyree um 222 yards on 56 rushes so that's 4.0 yards per carry or 4.4 yards per carry um and he is actually though he's a he's the type of guy that you got to watch him coming out of the backfield because he had 258 yards and two touchdowns receiving last year as well Mm -hmm. so Definitely, you know, the type of guy that you got to watch him on any swing passes or wheel routes, anything that might have. Now, this one's interesting to me. They have this um, this bigger back. His name's Audric Estime. He's 5'11", 230, oh, yeah. just built like a rock. And he really hasn't played much, though. He had seven rushes for 60 yards, so 8.6 yards per carry. Pretty much he was Mayan Williams from 2020. Mm-hmm. That, you know, and so I, I, I'm reading a lot of stuff about how, like, they think that this guy might be able to take over the game provide some punishment, you know, really wear down Ohio State's defense. But it's not like it's someone that Ohio State hasn't seen before because it sounds exactly like Mayan Williams did in 2020. Uh, Let me see. I got some more here. O-line for them. We all, I think everybody knows how good their offensive line um, is or can be. So I'm not going to go over all the names and everything. Jarrett Patterson is their All-American left guard. We still don't know if he's playing yet or not. No. He's still day-to-day. Um, they go about, like, probably average 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six across, though, all of them above 3'10", 3'15". So they're big boys. It's a typical Notre Dame line. I mean, that's always – I mean, Notre Dame's always fielded good lines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then so defensive – side of the ball. And I know they got more. Like I think they got their top returning linebacker back. Um guys that really stand out there, Isaiah Foskey as a defensive end. He had 11 sacks last year. He's a big time, big time defensive end. He's going to be a first round draft mm-hmm. pick. And then um they lost their safety Hamilton last year to being a first round draft pick. Brandon Joseph transferred in from Northwestern. He was a uh 2020 all big 10 and i don't know if everybody remembers him or not he famously had a one-handed interception in the end zone of the big 10 (sighs) title game when justin fields went for garrett wilson so yeah yeah, he made a hell of a play so that that's that guy he's over at notre dame now so he was a plug and play that they someone that can play you know immediately through transfer point um and then i just i wanted to dive in a little bit about um just like returning production so i did go to the fuel phil steel magazine on this one just so everyone ha- kind of has an idea of what we look what we're looking at about what's coming back for both teams um because it is maybe a little bit closer than what everyone thinks so returning production ohio state is ranked as the 44th um most experienced team coming back from what played last year Notre Dame 64 so they're not like below 100 or anything they have a lot of guys that played last year coming back um yards accounted for this is a big one so 75 percent of Ohio State's yards is coming back that's the 30th ranked in the nation Notre Dame I scribbled out because I wrote something wrong somewhere in the 40s I think it's like 40.6 percent of their yards so that's 95th coming back in the nation so that's a huge gap right yeah. there. Um, tackles are pretty much identical, though. Ohio State has 77.8% of their tackles coming back. Notre Dame has 777 okay. So their defenses are pretty much both coming back to what played last year. So that's number 10 and 11 mm-hmm. returning. Um, offensive line starts. Ohio State has 45. Notre Dame has 83. So that's a pretty big gap. Mm-hmm. You're looking at... Uh, looks like 54th ranked for Notre Dame as far as offensive line starts, 108th for Ohio State. So that that's a big gap right there for your offensive line starts because that's huge. Just one being comfortable in the game, but also you know being in rhythm, gelling with each other, and then big play defense again, pretty much the same. Ohio State has 75.9, Notre Dame has 76.6. So I think those are a little bit closer. Of course, though, I believe Ohio State. Um, they have better talent on their team. And Phil goes into that too. So when we're talking about unit strength, he has uh, Ohio State's quarterback room as number one, Notre Dame's quarterback room as 39th, running backs two to 50, wide receivers two to 11, 
um, which that's before injuries. So Notre Dame's yeah. room's a little bit weaker than that now. Offensive line, three to nine. Defensive line, five to six. So that's pretty close. Linebackers, he does have an edge to Notre Dame on this. It's 18 to 10. This one I found kind of interesting. Secondary is 14 to five, Notre Dame's advantage, um, which I didn't think that was going to be like that. But I think maybe that's a lot of what was based off the safety play last year. So I think Ohio State will prove that, you know, they'll be okay with that. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, just some interesting numbers. I think it's closer than what everybody thinks. I think their defense wasn't any better than Ohio State's last year. You know, just Ohio State maybe just more on a national stage got beat up than what they did. Um, The other things, though, that I wanted to look at, because I thought it would be interesting, um, because everyone's talking about, you know, Ohio State's weakness last year were run defense, at least presumably it was run defense and it was running off. So they bring in Jim Knowles to help with the run defense. Justin Fry comes in run offense as their offensive line coach, of course. Um, Knowles, so I was looking at when he went to Duke and when he went to Oklahoma State. Kind of surprising. Don't want to scare anybody. Um, Numbers didn't get any better, though. So when he went to Duke in 2009, they were giving up 152 yards per game rushing. In 2010, they were giving up 208. And then in 2011, it went down to 180. So it did get significantly better by his second year. Yeah. But it did get worse, about 50 yards from one year to the next. And then, of course, that's not anywhere indicative of what is going to be at Ohio State. Much better players than what you have at Duke. I just thought it would be interesting to look at. Oklahoma State stayed pretty even. Um, when the year before he got there, they gave up 140 yards per game. year he got there, they gave up 185. So it was about 40 more yards per game. But again, that doesn't, you know, better talent at Ohio State. And you never know, like, that could have been a year that, um, I don't know, 2018, but that could have been a year, you know, Texas and Oklahoma both were running all over everybody. You, you never know that yeah. stuff. Um, And then Justin Fry, just his three stops. So this one I found really interesting. So at Temple in 2011, they averaged, I'm sorry, in 2010, they have, before he gets there, they averaged 150 yards per game. 2011, they averaged 256, up 100 yards per game, up a yard per rush. Um, Boston College, 2012, the year before he got there, they averaged 90 yards per game running, 3.2 per rush. Year he gets there, 212 yards per game, 5.3 yards per rush. UCLA is a little bit closer. 2017, before he gets there, it's 114 per game at a 3.8 clip excuse me and 2018 it's 155 per game at a 4.1 clip so his team's always got better and just to give everyone reference again ohio state average looks like um i just had 180 yards per game at 5.6 yards per carry so if if he gets better than that we're looking at six yards per carry as a team yeah. that's gonna be awesome oh yeah oh i definitely <laughs> I liked me. all I liked all that information uh that um yeah it's interesting to see with uh you know how they fare you know again we've talked i mean we just you just said it with the knolls i mean it's just a lot of things obviously duke there's a know, lot of factors like that what's play going who, who who they who do they play that year in the acc i mean is that a clemson year which uh i mean i know that's before Debo, but you know clemson's always had some pretty good running backs right. or you know florida state's always had good running backs miami's always had good running backs i mean so i mean who are they playing up against that, you know, and they're freaking Duke. Yeah. Right. Like who do they have out of conference? You know, do, do they get drubbed by like Alabama one of those years yeah. too? So yeah. Oklahoma state's uh, a little bit more interesting just because, uh, you know, I mean, you don't get a lot of running necessarily in the big 12, but you actually get more running than a lot of people think that you but by year four, this year that he, you know, his last year, they gave up 87 yards per game rushing. So yeah. I mean, I mean, significant. Increase. Yeah, Oklahoma always has a pretty good running back. Texas is usually has a good running back. Uh, Iowa State. I mean, there's teams there that have usually oh, have yeah. some good running backs in that in that conference. Um, I think so. Going into now, kind of just like our thoughts and the prediction. So, I mean, let's start. Kind of, we'll just start real quick on the just the lines themselves. So, you you know, I I think the biggest thing is when you think about Ohio State's offensive line against Notre Dame's defensive line. You know. Uh, where's it's Fosky, right? That's Isaiah, Isaiah Fosky. Fosky. Yeah. I mean, where is he lining up and what's, what are they, 
I mean, you think you're going to get a lot of him in Paris, but you know, you know, Notre Dame is going to try him against DeJuan. And you'd, be sm- uh, you'd be stupid not to. So, you know, how much of that are they going to do and can both hold up against him? Um, and then, you know, it's kind of up to Ohio state is, you know, where's Kate Stover at that point, you know, where's he moving to, to kind of, you know, get some, maybe, you know, clip him a little yeah. bit and stuff and uh, check him up a little bit. Uh, just uh you know, keep him a little honest and stuff like that. So, I mean, some of that stuff's interesting. Um, I mean, I think that's a, a lot of the biggest, I mean, obviously the biggest question mark on the offense is the offensive line. I mean, I know you can say the running game, but that half of that goes with the yeah. offensive line. I mean, you can say unproven receivers, but yeah, but I mean, I'm less, you still got one of the best receivers though, coming back. I mean, and we saw a lot from the other two, and I know it's just the bowl game and stuff, but Utah wanted to win that game very badly, and those all those receivers performed. It wasn't like you, Utah was kind of like, oh, I don't really care about this game right. at all. So, I mean, they got Utah's best in that game. So, like, uh, I saw enough from our offensive receivers, from the receivers that I think were fine there. So, yeah, it comes down to the offensive line, but – them playing a more traditional offensive line with having true guards in there. And I mean, we've seen a lot of Matt Jones. So yeah, coming back, they might not necessarily the starts might buy there, but I mean, you're hearing a lot of good things about Donovan Jackson. I think we know what Matt Jones can do and Whipler looked good last year. So I think as long as the interior holds up and you know, the tackles are ready to take on, a good rush and this will probably this will probably be the best rush that they play all year you know maybe depending what michigan has but yeah. you know michigan lost a lot at that those positions so i mean i would think that this is probably the the best uh uh probably rush that we're gonna have against us all year well uh, possibly the playoffs well yeah wisconsin they're gonna be good they're always good yeah but i just i don't I don't see anybody right now having a guy like fosky on their team oh uh, i'm sorry yeah you pass rush i'm yeah, that's what that's what i mean <laughs> okay. yeah my brain went that yeah where i started coughing and stopped listening no no i mean the pass rush that the offensive line are going to be facing yeah i def yeah i for sure i could see that now wisconsin usually does have a really good pass rusher mm-hmm. but isaiah fosky until you get into playoffs he is going to be the best edge rusher that you're going to go against and then on the other side of the ball i think is that i mean if the defense if the ohio state defense line is ready to go i mean yeah there's a lot of really really good returners that notre dame has but this will be by far i mean depending possibly clemson what clemson's got I mean, this is either the best or the second best pass rush that Notre Dame's going to play all year. Yeah. uh, I mean, this is going to be, I mean, so we'll see how, I mean, yeah, they got a lot of returning guys, but I don't know if they necessarily, uh, I don't necessarily remember their schedule from last year. I don't think they've played, uh, you know, they're going to really be playing this type of probably pressure coming at them neither. Yeah. And I mean, it all goes back to, you know, it's like the offensive line. We know they're big, we know they're good, but like you said, are are they, you know, that good to stop Ohio State? And they may be. I'm not saying, you know, oh, they're they're not ready for this. And we're gonna, you know, get to no, Buckner all day long. Like I mean, I, I thought that against Oregon and Ohio State and Michigan, and Ohio State couldn't touch either one of those quarterbacks. So I mean, there's definitely a challenge for the defensive line to prove that they're still who they say they are. Yeah. Um but yeah, I mean, I just I think you're right that you know it's going to be between us and Clemson. Clemson's a really good defense. Yeah, I, they got studs there. But yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think back to last year too. I mean, Notre Dame lost to Cincinnati. Cincinnati wasn't. No, they weren't. You know, they weren't as good as what Ohio State can be. So, all right, I think so, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go with. Um, we'll start on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, a couple of things. So basically what we're going to do is just a couple of things that we really need to, that Ohio state needs to do to be successful. Who do we think is the most valuable player offensively? Um, and then kind of the surprise player that we think is going to just come out. Not, not necessarily surprised, but somebody that you're not necessarily thinking that's going to do something really big on offense. The, you know, that uh, is going to help, you know, push them forward. And then maybe just letting, and then we'll do the same thing on the defense. And then we'll just do one general wild card for the whole game. Like who is that wild card, regardless, offense, defense, coaching staff, that just uh, 
how they do in this game is going to determine a lot. So we'll okay. start on the offense. So just it doesn't have to be any specific number, just a couple of things that come to your head of what Ohio State needs to do offensively to win this game on Saturday. I mean, these are going to sound so like textbook cliche, whatever, but um, I do think Ohio State, you know, they they have to rush at at least. I want to say five yard clips. I think you you need to average five yards per carry on the ground. I'm sure it doesn't need to be that good to beat Notre Dame, but that makes me feel really comfortable that they're wearing Notre Dame's defensive line, wearing their defense down. Um, you got to consistently pick up third downs at, you know, yeah. however you need to do it. You need to. So I think a lot of what we're going to see evolve with Ohio State and what they're going to go to, I think they're going to throw it a lot to Jackson Smith and Jigba on third downs because nobody can stick with them. And so, I mean, unless he's getting double teamed, and then at that point, you know, you throw to Marv on a slant or something like that, and you just watch him take off. So, I, I mean, I think you got to do those two things, you know, run at a very successful clip, pick up your third downs. Um, of course, you know, keep CJ Stroud upright, which I think the offensive line will do for the most part. I'm sure he's going to get some pressure in there, but for the most part, they're going to keep him upright. Um, I think you also do need to have some sort of threat for a downfield reception, like receiving threat. So you're going to need somebody that's going to, even if they're a decoy more times than not take off and, you know, hit them every now and then for a big game. Cause I, I feel like in 2018 and 2021, when Ohio state had so many receiving options, but it was all like an extension of the run game. It hurt the run game and you didn't see Stroud and Haskins really go like, you know, 25 yard or more passes downfield. And I would just, I would love to see them start, you know, really getting back to that. Like what Justin Fields and, you know, Cardale and JT Barrett did semi well, you know, JT's freshman year with yeah. Devin Smith that really just opened up the run game. Yeah. So pick up third downs, run for five yards per carry, establish a deep threat receiver. Mm -hmm. um, going off on the, the deep threat receiver, I mean, I definitely, I want to see that, but I also want to see, I, I know what you're saying about that. Maybe some of the, the different passing games might have messed up the running game a little bit. But last year, too, I thought that they were way too predictable on third and shorts mm -hmm. and second and yeah. shorts trying to run the ball. So I would like to see them maybe be a little less predictable in those and maybe every now and then throw a pass play on a third and one right. or third and two. And yes, I definitely want them to get back to the, the type of offense that they can pick up a third and one and third and two whenever they need to pick it up. But I'd also like to see that, you know, we can do that but we know that you're singling on that. So we're going to throw it on a, a quick little out route to, you know, Jackson Smith. And yeah, you know, it's just, right. I want to see stuff like that, that just maybe be a little less predictable in some of those situations. And just to interject real quickly and, you know, finish after that. But I think that's going to open up a lot of the run game too, is be less predictable. So I, I think absolutely you're right that I don't even know, maybe on the first one you get, maybe throw it to Jackson Smith and jig book. Cause you don't want them to key in on your running game. So yeah, I 100% agree. Like 31, two and one, whatever, fourth and ones, maybe throw the ball. Yeah. Um, running the game. I definitely think they need to, uh, the five, five, a carry is, uh, definitely a good thing. They got to get over. I, I really think they got to be over 200 yards on the ground. Uh, really between and i'm not saying you know yeah trevian needs to be at 200 but between trevian and my end i want to see him at over 200 yards because i really think that once i mean we've seen years past i mean ohio state's running game is just so good and they once they get to that point they are just as nearly i mean it's almost impossible to beat them that and with this offense if you're running at 200 yards then with you got throwing the ball. I mean, Notre Dame in that situation just has no chance in this. Right. Game. Exactly. Yeah. So like, it'll get ugly quick. Like that's just, that's the way I'm looking at it. And it helps when, you know, in the second half, if, uh, if you get up on them and stuff like that, you know, those rushing yards helps and 
helps get the game over with, keeps people healthy and uh, gets us on to the, the next week. Um, partly with that. And, you know, when you're talking about keeping Stroud up, right, they definitely have to, they have to have Foskey circled, triple circled everywhere he's at on the field when they're getting ready to pass the ball. So they know where the, the move, the tight ends to and stuff like that. And where the running backs need to be for blocking stuff, because, you know, the tackles might need a little help on some of that stuff because he's going to be really, really good. And if they can keep him for the majority of the game, he's going to get a couple shots on CJ. So, you yeah. know, some of that's going to be come on, uh, come back to CJ um, that he needs to get up from those, but that, uh, you know, just, don't let him get a bunch of shots on CJ. Who knows? Maybe it'll be Orlando Pace versus Simeon Rice part two, you know? It could be. Um, and then uh sorry for the younger crowd <laughs> that don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> and then uh I'm trying to think. Oh yeah, you, you know, where you're talking about third downs, I agree with that, but I'm not gonna dwell on that because you said it. They need to do well in the red zone. And that yeah, be, and yes. And you know. I want touchdowns and I want to come up with some sort of creative ways. If the field gets shrunk and they can't figure out, you know, and just normal kind of play action passes and running the ball and stuff like that, how to get into the end zone. I hope they have a, a decent list of different things that they can try to yeah. throw at Notre Dame. That's just different. And, you know, but they need touchdowns and, you know, they can a field goal here and there. I'm never going to argue over good field goal kickers, sure. but you know, I want 90% plus when they're in the red zone, I want touchdowns and, you know, and that's not crazy to think of when, you know, when you think of urban, most of urban's years here, when they got in the red zone, they got six out of it. And so, being an offensive genius means nothing. If you can, you know, finish the last 20 yards. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's the big one. So that would be what I would say for my on offense. So I like that. Um, let's do uh you value most valuable or kind of the, you know, just that surprise player that does something, you know, crazy, whichever you want to go with. I'm saying uh, Trey Henderson's my MVP for the offense. So um, I think he's going to have 175 plus yards on the ground. And that might be a crazy number, two touchdowns. And I think he takes a touchdown in from more than 40 yards out. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, I'm going obvious here. To, <laughs> I think it's. C I try to stay away from. I mean, it's. I think Trey could have a good game. I, I think CJ is going to be the man. I think JSN is going to be a good game. I just think that everything. CJ has a really good game, and they are doing everything in the defenses back. And you know, and sure, maybe the running game is helping them out a little bit. But you know, I mean, CJ Stroud, if he's just CJ Stroud, and but maybe even better because he's a year more into the offense, then I just. How many rushing yards does he end up with? I mean, I think he's going to be more. I don't think there's going to be any running plays called for him. I think he's going to be more open when he's got open field. He says that he's faster and stuff like that. So I, I think they've been working on stuff like that with him. Um, I'm going to say 50. I think that, you know, I think he's going to get a couple. I was because thinking like 20. I, I just think that there's going to be some third downs like five, 10 yard runs, like in, I think where he will get open, like the, the whole field's going to go away from him because they're going to be trying to cover All the receivers, the receivers yeah. uh, that he's just going to have an easy 10 yard run. And I, I mean, I really see him. I don't think 50 yards is that much of a stretch because I mean, that's just, like I said, that's five, 10 yard runs. And I mean, we've seen this a gazillion time with quarterbacks, not even, great running quarterbacks you know all that green opens up because they're on the receivers right. and yeah it's an it's an easy it's an easy 10 yard Take run your easy first down yeah. don't make it hard for yourself yeah um yep all right so defense well it was just uh, your who do you think is is there a, a surprise player on offense that uh you think's gonna i don't i i think emeka buka is getting into the end zone this week I mean, I think I said that. What did I predict? He had the most touchdowns for receivers. Or yeah, it was something like that. I think it wouldn't have been yards. It had been touchdowns. So, um, I think I don't know if he's going to score on a kickoff return or a passing touchdown. I think he's going to have the first touchdown of the season, though. Okay. And I'm I'm kind of thinking that Notre Dame's going to score on their first series, and then on the, their next kickoff he's going to take it to the house but it could be a receiving touchdown i think he gets the first touchdown in the game though i think he's a huge part of the offense 
I really like the receivers. I feel like, you know, with Wilson and Olave, and it, this is going to come off me calling them like slow somehow. And obviously they're not slow. We know they're not, but I think this is just like a different group of athlete for receiver where those guys were like kind of small pos- possession receivers, like what they could do, just their route running, um, you know, good hands that they could always get themselves open. I feel like you got guys now that really can like catch the ball on like a slant or, you know, and just put their foot in the ground and go. I think just Ibuka, Harrison, Fleming, they are all just really strong, fast guys. And I think we're just going to be, I think we're going to be pleasantly surprised with like big playability this year. Yeah. Um, and just quickly on my guy, I actually, I, I think it's going to be Cade. I think, I think he's going to get into the end zone. And I think he's going to get a couple catches. Yeah. And that's where he's going to just get lost because I want to see him pancake Foskey. I don't know if it can happen or not because Foskey's like, he's one of those big defensive yeah. ends. He's like, he's a, he's a dude. Yeah. But I, I want to see Cade just put him on his butt. Yeah. So I, I think Cade will be mine. All right. So what's your, uh, What's your couple of things with uh, the defense that uh, you think that they absolutely need to do to win this game? Play the scheme. That's, I mean, that's just like, know your assignment. Of course, you know, defensive line, don't pin your ears back and go. I mean, this is a first time starting quarterback. You know, he does not have a ton of passing experience at this level of college football. You're Larry Johnson's freaking defensive line. You got two yep. five stars on there. I don't maybe three five stars on your defensive line. Like just if you get that chance, go get him. You got to get there, you know, and we've been so close the last two years. And it's like so close, but so far away that they just can't get to the quarterback anymore. And I know quarterbacks are, they rush their process against Ohio state, but you know, get to them. But my first thing though, know the scheme, play the scheme. So. Fill your gaps, spill everything like Jim Knowles likes to do, and let Steele and Tommy just clean up these guys. Yeah. And I think I think Steele could have a pretty big game. Um, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm kind of skipping ahead of myself here. And then secondary, I don't know, just limit limit the damage what Mayer can do. Just stick on those receivers. White on rice, man. Yeah. I think the 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 biggest uh, thing that I'm looking forward to, so it is this quarterback with this offensive line and how he does. So, I mean, I think if they can get to him and they can get him down, if you're worried about Mayer, that's the easiest way to really isolate that is that you just get to the quarterback. Right. Um, but what I'm getting nervous about is that I really want to see how they do against a running quarterback. They haven't really played a really – quality running quarterback it seems like in a while that i'm trying to think about like and it seems like this guy has definitely got some uh trevor lawrence <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh it's 19 like- why will levis came in for clifford yeah that stay he he did some stuff yeah so it just and and i think what i worries me the most about him that i think that if they start getting pressure on him and he can make guys miss and he can get out that's where not only he could do some damage, but Mayer could do some damage too. If somebody pulls off of Mayer yeah. or whatever, and you know, I Cam th- Rising did okay for Utah. Also. Yes, that's true. Um, so you know, that's definitely the, one of the big things is for me. Just keep this kid in check, uh, and you know, make him feel it. Make make him start getting like nervous and uh, feel the crowd and everything around it. And let's see if we can start making, you know mistakes really start piling up for him like uh that uh if we can get him to start making mistakes and then the mistakes just keep on multiplying because he starts getting into his head Mm -hmm. um linebackers is always going to be the big thing for i want to see what they look like because it's just that they they've left a lot to be desired for several years in a lot of spots i mean they've had some good spots at different times and then they've had some bad spots i mean they've literally they have been the most inconsistent part of the defense for several years now so it's like yeah. you know i want to get back to the position that you safety know, play has been bad too that that they are just they're what you expect from ohio state linebacking crew so uh you know and and, and i'm going to see what this defense looks like as a whole is you know i mean we've been talking so much about the scheme and about it's just pure chaos for the quarterbacks and then offensive coordinators and there's just 
you know, so much thrown at it. And, you know, and, uh, you know, Knowles even talked about his press conference the other day. He's like, you know, and he's talking about corners being on islands. But half the thing is that, you know, he likes the fact that the quarterback does not know if the corners pre-snap, does the corner have help or doesn't the corner have help? Mm-hmm. And that's what his whole defense, a lot of it's predicated on. And it's just about confusion. And this is a young quarterback. He hasn't played a lot of games. He's this is first year starter that uh, I think that they could really mess him up with some in the head yeah, and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to see how well he dissects Ohio state's defense, because, you know, if he's having a real hard time with it, then it could be a long night for them. Agreed. All right. Your MVP. So we're doing an MVP and we're doing a, it's just, yeah, a guy we, just some a surprise guy okay mvp i'm gonna see josh proctor um i think he's getting two interceptions in this game one of them he's gonna take back to the house oh nice nice um i'm going with uh jack sawyer because i think he's gonna have uh you know his coming out party he's gonna have two to three sacks i think i like yeah i think he very well could and um i think he's gonna really he's gonna this is where he's gonna really start you're gonna see this kid start making those comments he's going to start compounding his mistakes and they're going to keep doubling and doubling because i think the defensive line is going to be really much in his face and when he drops back to pass they're going to be coming at him fast and that uh and i think jack sawyer is just going to get home a few times and he's going to just be a difference maker i I think jt could be the same way same with zach Harrison. i think a couple of these guys are going to really make some things and it, I think it's going to really feel like an old school Ohio State defensive line where when you, the game is over, they just be like, yeah, the Ohio State's defensive line won this game at yeah. the end of the night. And I just think that I have just a feeling that they are due for it and they got the players to do it and they're going to do it in this game. The thing about Jack is, you know, he's a lot bigger than what he was last year. So he's still a baby, face. He, but, but he's not a liability in the yeah. run game anymore. At least I don't think so. So you can keep him on the field in yeah. any situation. Yeah. All right. And then any surprise guys you think that's Court was, Williams. I like that one. I like court. Uh, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Latham. I think he, I, I think both of them, he like, it's kind of a weird dynamic. Cause if you want to kind of limit what Michael Mayer is doing, I think you go more Latham ransom in there. If you want to limit what they could do in the run game though, I think you want to put court Williams there. So I think it's just kind of like, what does Knowles like, what adjustment does he have to make? I think it's going to kind of be the deciding factor about which one of us are going to be right. Um, any wild cards or kids, just any random thing that it goes in Ohio state's favor in this game. And that's just it. It doesn't need offense, defense, special teams, certain players, coaches, fans. I mean, it doesn't matter. Just what's your one thing that you think that could be really the difference in this game for Ohio state to win it. Um, and I mean, this is probably a cop out, just confidence be behind CJ Stroud. Mm-hmm. I like that. Um, I think mine one is that, and this is not going to be ever be indicative if Ohio state wins or loses. I think I would, I want to see how Marcus does as a head coach coming home with all the emotions he's coming in. And I know he's been an assistant here. Now he's public enemy number one. I, I want to see how he handles it outside of hardball because, you know, I always think of number two, I guess, you know, when fickle went to Cincinnati, there was the one, there's one, the only one game that really stands out that he just, that it looked so outmatched. And like, yeah, even last time. year against Alabama, he didn't necessarily look outmatched and he got blown out by Ohio yeah, it was state. A good Cincinnati team too. And that, and I just, I, that just makes me think of Marcus is, and I think a little bit of the emotions got the fickle. And I think that's a big deal. And I just, I want to see how Marcus does in it. And that I think that doesn't necessarily mean if he's head on his shoulders, completely focused, none of it bothers him that they're going to beat Ohio state. But I think if he starts getting a little bit outside his head and stuff like that, and it starts like, Oh, then they could get really bad really fast because you know, it's, it's just different. And Penn state should have had a pick six and he let the ball go right through his arms. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I get distracted with the games, but no, I, I oh, mean, yeah, I, that should have been fixed. Six. I agree. I mean, I agree with you. Like, are the lights going to be too bright for him at home, you know, and going to feel some pressure and, you know, he's 
said some things he shouldn't have said in the off season and yeah. And you know, in, in the, in the same kind of thing, you know, he's, he's played nine games. He's coached nine games of kind of equal talent. I wouldn't say, but Ryan day is five and four in those games. Yeah. And you know, you know, he's, he has had some bad losses in there. And so is he, if somehow it doesn't go in Ohio state's favor, you know, how is he dealing with, you know, what I'm not, he's not on a hot seat, but what's like, what does that pressure look like now coming out from the fan base that, uh, you know, if, if Ohio state drops another big game. At oh home. yeah. And like, let's face it. I mean, we haven't won one of these in a long time. Yeah. So this, there's a lot going for fans for Ohio state. There's a lot on the line here. No, yeah. of course there's a lot on the line because, this is one of those teams, and I know, end of the day, it all depends on how you lose, but, you know, we say that Ohio State, you know, even one loss, Big Ten champion, they'll be in the playoff, especially if it happened game one, as long as they don't get totally, totally, totally embarrassed. But this is one of those teams that you really can't afford to lose to, kind of like where we were with Oregon last year. Like, you can't lose to the team that could possibly be the team keeping you out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I know it's – improbable that you're going to have four undefeated teams sitting at the end of the season, uh, but you never know. And right. It's uh, you know, so yeah, it could come down to a one loss conference champion, Ohio state against a 12 and 0 Notre Dame. And you know, that's all they have to go on is that, well, they beat you guys in Columbus. So, yeah. Um, all right. So um, just uh, you want to, let's quickly go through scores predictions and then we'll call it a night. All right. Let me get my big 10 games out. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, so I mean Purdue and Penn State's playing right now, so we won't say anything. Um, Minnesota's on at nine. They are they're playing New Mexico State. They are a thirty six point favorite. Um, I got no idea. Yeah, Minnesota covers. Why not? Um, uh, I'll say that. Uh, I'll say Minnesota wins, but they're not going to cover. I mean, I don't know what how good New Mexico State is, but Minnesota's not really a uh, thirty six point better than yeah, anybody team. Yeah, so. I'll say that they, I say, I'll say they win handedly, but it's not going to be by 36 points. Uh, Michigan state plays tomorrow. Western Michigan. They are a 21 point favorite. I will say they do not cover. I'm going to go with a They cover in that game. That Michigan state's the most interesting team to me in the big 10 this year, because like they could be a second place, big 10 East team. They could also be a fourth or fifth place, big 10 East team. So yeah, I, I want to see what they are. And, you know, Mel Tucker did really good last year and, uh, you know, and I, I'm just going to see how it, he kind of looks this year. Uh, Indiana and Illinois play tomorrow. Oh, that's going to be a great one. Indiana is a one point favorite. Um, <laughs> Cause they're at home. So that means Illinois is two points better than them. Um, I'm, I'm going to say Illinois is going to win outright. <laughs> Bert's going to beat them because Tom yeah. Allen's a joke of a coach. I think that's, that guy got way too much credit. I think that's finally got caught up with them. That, and that might be Bert's only big 10 win this year. So <laughs> but he'll beat that. That, yeah, that dude, uh, Michigan opens up against Colorado state. They are 30 and a half point favorites. They'll win, but no, you know what? Michigan, they always blow these teams out in those first games. I'm going to say they cover. I think they're going to cover too. You know what's going to be very interesting about them? And, you know, I know they play Iowa this year and stuff. And, of course, the Big Ten East. But, you know, they they have an awful uh, non-conference slate. Is It'll be interesting to see if they could be undefeated coming into Columbus. I, I think that they could very easily be. Um but mm-hmm. you know he always drops a weird one, so I think he, I think he'll probably have a loss before Columbus. But who knows? Is I I think that they could really, uh, you know, they're not a conference slate. I mean, I think UConn's like the worst Division One team out there, and they're playing them. So yeah. <laughs> Iowa has South Dakota State. I don't know how good South Dakota State is anymore. It feels like one of these teams always end up getting. Um, he always gets one of them. So. <laughs> I'm going to, there is no spread for this game though. I think it's just because they're not a FBS team, but I, I want to win. I think I got to say they're going to win, but he always loses to a team that he's not supposed to. 
I don't think he's I don't think he's going to get jackrabbit, but he might. <laughs> no. no, I'll go with Iowa. Uh, Maryland at Buffalo. Maryland are twenty four point favorites. I think Maryland wins, but Buffalo can cover the spread. It'll be interesting to see how good Buffalo is this year. I really like Maryland's offense, so I think they'll cover it. I think that I think they'll probably blow them out. I mean, I don't know how good Buffalo is this year. Buffalo is always one of those teams that, like, every couple of years are pretty. Yeah, decent. and they usually they're usually pretty good in the MAC. But I think that I think a lot of people are. I think I think Maryland's actually kind of not to win the conference, but they're my dark horse team in the Big Ten East that they could push for a second place finish i think if they if that offense is as good as i think they could be because i think they'll put a lot of points on a lot of people this year and give some people a lot of fits Mm -hmm. uh rutgers boston college bc is home and they are seven point favorites i like shiano as a coach but i think halfley has a better squad and i like halfley as a coach so i'll give bc covers this I think they'll cover it too, but I don't think it's going to be a blowout by any stretch. I think it will be because I think Shiano's got Rutgers a lot tougher, and I think they'll they'll win like by ten points. I think Nebraska has North Dakota. No, uh, no spread for this game. I'm going to say North Dakota is going to beat Nebraska in Lincoln. Scott Frost is going to get fired on the field. <laughs> Nebraska is going to beat them, but if it don't look pretty, man, Scott Frost, that October 1st date when uh, his contract, uh, basically his buyout goes bye-bye, is coming. You, you a, think coming, Trev, Trev makes another circle around that date? Yeah, that's, uh, that's coming a lot faster for him. Uh, Wisconsin gets Illinois State. Again, no spread. Wisconsin will win easily. Yeah, I think they'll win easily. And then Ohio State, Notre Dame. Ohio State's a 17-point favorite. Um let me just look at if there's any other good top 25 matchups. George is a 17 point favorite against Oregon. It's the Chick-fil-A kickoff. The thing about Georgia is like, uh, you know, it is kind of like a choke. It feels like they've lost 70 players to the NFL draft. So, but uh, obviously it wasn't that many, but uh, it'll be interesting how they replace it. I mean, Kirby's a great recruiter. And so I, I think they cover Cr- crystal they cover. ball's not there. So I'm expecting them to cover. I think they'll cover easily 17 points. I think they'll beat them by at least, you know, four scores. Um, sorry, Oregon, uh, Arkansas. Who I, I'm not buying yet. They're number 19 in the country. They're playing Cincinnati. They're six and a half point favorites. Um, it's at Arkansas. So I kind of like them to cover this. I, I'm going with them to cover it. And I, I don't know a lot about Arkansas, but I know. Uh, so I was listening to a kind of an SEC reporter talking today and he said, Arkansas is pretty much his kind of dark horse team. And uh, that's actually, he said, he thinks that that could be where somebody knocks off Alabama and Fayetteville mm-hmm. on October 1st. It. And like that's, and so he said, don't sleep on them. And so I'm going to, I'm going to go with the Arkansas that I think they'll cover. I mean, that, but Luke's good, man. Uh, you know, I don't know what he's got coming back. You know, they lost all their big time players, but you know, Luke, I, I think Luke could keep it. It'll be a closer game. I mean, six and a half is not a big score, but I, I think they'll probably win by 10, seven to 10. Mm-hmm. Um, not, not a ranked game for both teams. Utah is going to the swamp to play Florida. Utah is only a three point favor in this game. Of course, you know, that might mean that they think they're a six point better team. Um, at least I always, I always heard that the home team is a three point, you know, they get an automatic three points. What do you think? You think Billy Napier in game I, one can pull an upset? It's kind of hard. It's still hard for me to say that. I can't believe that that's like calling that an upset. I, I like Billy Napier. I think he's doing some good things down there. I like, I think Florida could be very interesting this year. Um, so I think they beat them. That I just don't, I don't see Utah going into the swamp and beating the Gators. Like, I, I think Florida wins outright too, which will it'll be interesting. Who knows? I know a lot of people are very high on Utah, and they have. I know a lot of people team. have a lot of people have Utah as a playoff team, and I think that goes out the window. On I mean, Utah's very good. They were very impressive, but like I can't judge them against what they did against Ohio State last year. That you know, like, you know, Ohio State's defense. There's a, there's a reason why Jim Knowles is making two right. million dollars a year. So, all right, man. It brings us to our game. Number two, Ohio State. Number five, Notre Dame. Um, so it's I, come down to 17. 17 point favorite. Let me just make sure the Monday. Oh, the Sunday game. Sunday game is LSU, Florida State. 
I think Brian Kelly blows them out. Neither one's ranked, so it don't matter. Uh, Clemson's playing Georgia Tech on Monday. Clemson wins. All right, back to Ohio State. 17-point favorites in Columbus. What do you think? Or do you want me to go first? No, that's fine. Uh, uh, so my – I'm going to go. I'm going to – I think Ohio State covers, and I think it's a cover. Um, hold on. Yeah, it should be a cover. No, maybe not. Uh, no, it won't be a cover. Um, I was going 38-17, so that would be. Yeah, that's 21. Okay, yeah. Come on, man. Don't make, yeah. don't make me do math. Uh, don't make me do math. No, okay. Yeah, that was what my score is. I think it's a 38 38- 17 win i think um it might take ohio state a minute to really gain control of the game but i think i think they are going to have control of the game before halftime and then i think i think at that point i don't think ryan day is not urban meyer and we've known that over now how many years so he always kind of he does take his foot off the pedal a little bit in the second half Mm -hmm. Uh, i think he'll still do that i don't think you know, I mean, there is some Ohio State guys on the other side of the ball, and it's, this is not going to be, I think, even with Marcus saying some stuff, this is not going to be, I don't think this is necessarily like, you know, I'm not going to go try to embarrass them, but I think at a point, you know, Ryan Day is a classy guy, and I think that, you know, he, once he gets into control of the game, then he's just going to be fine running the ball, maybe get Stroud out of there if he can get him out of there, and, uh, you know, because at the end of the day, it's not about beating Notre Dame by 50, 60 points. It's about, you know, making sure everybody's healthy to play in the second week of January. So, yeah. Uh, so I get that. I think 38, 17 is what I'm going with. I think it'll be, I think it's going to be like, uh, I think it'll be like 24 to 10 going into halftime. And okay. I think so, Ohio, so I think Ohio State will start be starting to pull away. Classic from that game. Ohio State, Notre Dame beat the hell out of them, but took the foot off the pedal type deal. Yeah. I think this game is going to be really close going into the fourth quarter. I think this game is going to be 28, 24 sub eight minutes left in the game. Okay. Ohio State's going to score. They're going to go up 35, 24. And then on the next possessions, when Josh Proctor is going to get his pick six, Ohio State's going to win 42, 24, but it's going to be a lot closer to, than that. It's just going to be one of those crazy backdoor covers that Ohio State, they, they end up getting to an 18 point win, but it's much closer than that. The whole game. All right. No, go, go with that. So 38, 17 and you 42, 24. 24. All right. So uh, we'll throw those up there twitter tomorrow um get some people's thoughts and uh unless there's anything you want to hit for tonight i think we're going to get on out of here no i'm good man so thank you everyone for stopping in to the buckeye bar for week one prediction um i'm john i'm mike oh i oh go buckeyes go buckeyes thank you for tuning in to this week's buckeye bar guys on buckeye bar talk Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that all notifications bell so you see when new content is added. And please remember to like and share so we can grow our audience. Uh, Don't be afraid to comment. We want to know what you're thinking and we want to know what content to add for you guys. OH. IO.